Because we share. Because we share. Okay, uh, since we're almost out of time, I'm going to kind of just blow through this uh, first pitch, which has to do with uh, setting up and using auto IPL in the case of system failures. There are just a few slides. There is some question I'll have to tell you about whether or not you need BCPII for this. I spent quite a bit of time with Steve Warren trying to determine is this or is this not a BCPII dependency. I decided in the end that it's probably not because of the way this worked. But basically, if a system stalls and it won't respond to uh, the other systems in a sysplex after a certain length of time specified in your sysplex failure management policy, then it will be fenced out of the plex by somebody else. If you specify a standalone dump, that dump will be taken with, uh, and if you set your standalone dump up right, it will not even be prompted. The operator will not even see the prompt. It will happen, and as soon as the dump is finished, the system will be IPL'd again. We had some episodes of this in the beginning of R12 where it would just happen at random times of day or night, and we could not figure out what was going on at first. Uh, this one that happened a few weeks ago happened during shutdown, so operators were watching. From their perspective, they issued a system shutdown, and there were a bunch of messages going back and forth and some complaints about this system. The next thing they knew, the system was coming up, and they had no idea why. We had to explain this whole process. But I'm going to move on to, to a topic that's near and dear to my heart. Uh, it has to do with an emulator. Is Rosalind still here? She had to jump out. Okay, so at the beginning of the week, Rosalind was talking about alternatives to TN3270 emulators. Uh, using uh, DevOps and other kinds of products. And it seems to be the question from, from the, the whippersnappers, why do they need a green screen anyway? What's it good for? Well, uh, 100 years ago, people depended on horses for daily transportation. Nobody that I know of anywhere in, in, in the modern world does that anymore. But when you go down and you spend $75,000 for a Tesla, it's going to be measured in horsepower at some point. So. So these things don't just disappear because uh, we, th we think they're old fashioned. OK, this is a particular product. Uh, we don't like to talk about products specifically. Well, OK, this is not an ISV presentation. I have no connection with this product other than being a devoted user of it for a long, long time. I used to work with the author of this, Tom Brennan. He's not a colleague anymore. For years, he, he forbid me from talking about it at Share. And uh, we don't work together anymore, so tough luck. <laughs> Sometime back in the 90s, when I came to, uh, to SCE, uh, he and I worked together. We were sysprogs. And he came in to me one day and said, would you like to try out this emulator that I wrote? From that day forward, I have never used another emulator at work. And this was basically beta, but it was so good that I stuck with it. And if there was a problem with it, he would say, well, why don't you go use uh, something else? Instead, he would fix it for me, and there was never any reason to, to use anything else. It's the only emulator, OK, and I'm, I'm stating this because I believe it to be true, the only emulator that's written by an experienced mainframe sysprog. That is, this emulator is not written by somebody who knew how to write emulators, and oh, by the way, what do you guys need? He was a professional sysprog who wrote an emulator that would serve his purposes, my purposes, your purposes. He learned MVS first for many years. Then he learned C++ and Windows application programming and whatever it takes to make these things work. I don't even know the internals. But he, he knew what we need from the beginning. What does an emulator, what's it used for? What will help us in our work? What will uh, make things go faster, easier? And, um, and that's what he wrote. It contains time and labor saving usability features, uh, variations of copy paste. OK, this is sort of standard copy-paste, but he's got other kinds of things built in to, to make copy-paste more efficient in a TN3270 world. Uh, macros, I'll give an example of a macro. Very easy to create and record. Uh, some of these uh, features are supported by shortcut keys, uh, the ones that you use the most, I would guess. Uh, and others, uh, there's easy drop-down menus for selecting some of these other options. And what's key here is that many of these functions are context sensitive for JCL. I mean, that's what we, most of us deal with on, on, a, on a regular basis, which says that I know what a JCL thing looks like, and I'm going to assist you in manipulating your JCL. 
It can also work for other kinds of things with keyword equals value, but it's mainly oriented toward JCL. It's easy to install and to configure. It's lightweight. It initializes very quickly. It installs in its own directory structure. What the, one thing this means is when you move from one release to another, it maintains all of your old settings. However, you had it configured before. In the new uh, release, it's going to look the same. Now, there are some downsides which need to be stated up front. It works for Windows only, and that's a, a showstopper for some people who want Linux, but no, there's no Linux version. No it doesn't. Sorry? No Mac version either. I don't even understand that. Oh, Mac. I'm sorry, Mac. Mac, 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 Mac. I thought you said something else. Okay, you're right. Sorry. No Mac. Uh, yes, it's only, it's only Windows. Uh, it doesn't do certain kinds of, I just say fancy graphics, um, things that uh, traditional 3270 is capable of if you have all the right stuff. Um, I personally have never missed those. And main, Tom's main reason for not ever trying to put that in was it's a dumb place to do fancy graphics anyway. If you want fancy graphics, go to something you know, web pages or whatever. And the other thing is that Tom Brennan is a one-man ISV. I mean, it's just him. There's nobody else. Uh, could be an issue in a large shop. Uh, however, I can firmly say, as a user of this for, for many, many years, that there is no ISV on Earth that has provided better service than Tom okay, himself. That you report a problem to him, and you may get a, a fix to try out even the next day. I've used Vista for all my mainframe work, and I've had no pushback from my management. It is not the official emulator at the company. Uh, I would love it to be, but uh, it's one of these okay, other, other issues. And this is not a fiscal problem. That's all I'm going to say about money. Uh, it's it's an, a, corporate, a corporate policy issue as to whether or not your company might give you static for using this product. OK, this is, uh, it's got a customizable toolbar at the top. Uh, all these, each of these icons means something. You can choose which ones to show and which ones not to show. Uh, that's, that's your choice. And when you set it up, it will stay how, whoever you set it from, from release to release. It has um, file drop-down menus. This is in the case under, under file. You see some of the options that are there. I'm not going to go into them, but, but you get those options. Okay, Under edit, which is where, where a lot of the power is, uh, so edit, copy functions, okay, copy append, append no CR, copy fields, copy truncate. I'm not going to talk about which ones these are, uh, which what they do, but if you try out the product, explore them. Paste functions are especially interesting. Uh, it's not just normally, just not no ordinary, you know, paste the thing you got, but it pastes into the text that you're typing into based on the kind of text that it appears to be. So we get paste JCL, overlay, insert, yaka waka. Uh, some of these actually Tom wrote for me back in the days when IBM main used to be a VM system. And you would get this blank screen that you had to put text into, paste text into uh, whatever your problem description. And it came out looking weird. And I'd say, Tom, you know, this really looks bizarre. And a few days later, he said, well, try this. And it would be a formatted version of whatever text I copied from into a window that I drew on my screen. It was really cool. It still works. I just don't have the, the need for it the way I used to. Um, I'm going to give an example later on of a, of a, a paste repeat. Um, and there's also a paste continue, by the way, which if you need to copy this much text into uh, a member that you've only got this big a screen, you can copy fill the screen, scroll, copy continue. He remembers where you left off. He'll keep co copying as many times as you iterate until finally all the data is copied into this one single member or data set. It's really kind of cool. And select functions, OK? How you select the stuff that you're going to, to copy, uh, different, different options. And I'll give some examples. Um, well, shoot, I'm out of time. I, I really want to give a demo. If you're interested in seeing what it looks like, I'm going to log on to my system at home and show how some of this stuff works. Macro is really, is really useful. There's some options. OK, this is a macro, an example of logging on to my system. When you hit my system well, before you've connected with, with, uh, with Vista, you get just a blank screen. That's all there is. Then you have to type in something to get a network response back. Uh, well, actually, first, like, first I guess you get a, a thing that says, if you don't belong here, get the hell out, or whatever it actually says. 
Uh, and then you type in, in my case, TPX something something, and then I would type in a user ID, and then finally you get the TPX menu, which you'll see. So this is what the macro looks like. I did not code this. I just turned the macro recording on, went through the sequence to log on, and then said, I'm done, and this is the macro that it created. Um, so the, the key part is uh, the TPX PC mod 4, and then finally at some point he goes and looks to see if the system has come back to him. He types in my user ID and then uh, a new line which finishes the screen. I do not put my password in here. I wouldn't recommend anybody doing it, but there's nothing to prevent it, okay? If, if you're that um, adventurous, it's just stored in a text file somewhere. Um, probably not a good idea. So after issuing that macro, this is what I see. It's, it's built the whole screen. I've not had to, to type in that extra stuff. Okay, now I'm going to give this example. This is where if I hope I can get it to work. If you have to leave, sorry. But this has some really cool stuff where you, which I call editing within the product. Okay, this is a, this is a little play for, uh, for PDS tools or star tool as well. So I have, a, I have a JCL data set. This is what it looks like to start with. I happen to prefer to have the disposition first or whatever and the data set last because I like to see it at the end. So I could retype this stuff. I could move things around, do inserts. But with Vista, what I can do is, is start here. I'm, I'm, I'm just right clicking now. I'm right clicking on data set name. And notice how it picks up DSN equals the whole thing. Sorry? OK, session's over. Sorry, guys. Um, but but uh, what, cause what I wanted to show was that you click on something like a data set name, and it's, it highlights the data set name DSN equals plus the whole data set name that follows it. And when you highlight it, then you can manipulate it as a single unit. You don't have to, you can, but you don't have to draw your, your uh, cursor along the, the, the statement as long as it's a single JCL parameter. Now, if you want to pick up multiples, yeah, then you would need to start at the beginning, drag it across to pick up the whole thing. But individual uh, keyword equals uh, uh, syntax will be selected automatically on a right click. And then you can manipulate that, copy, uh, paste into, over, whatever. Uh, really lots of cool things. Um, anyway, it says, basically, see you in San Antonio. Thank you very much for coming to share this week. I hope you had a good time. The next one is uh, Remember the Alamo. And uh, we'll see you in about six months. Thank you very much. Because we're sick, we educate, we influence.